a big thing that came up here, right? Everything I was talking about already, which a lot of you guys are very different, right? You all have different goals. You have different perceptions. You want different things. And that's what I saw when I was working with a lot of my clients. It's everybody has a different goal in mind. You know, some people want to mostly run retreats. Others want to have, you know, a massively huge audience. Others want to just serve some clients and others want to sell their business eventually, right? So through this, I actually came up with the four types of impact makers. And some of you guys will be familiar with this if you're in the academy. But I wanted to go through these with you. So these are like, I guess, kind of archetypes in a way of very different types of entrepreneurs that are all amazingly awesome, that are just meant to market and do sales and grow their business a little bit differently from each other. Now, it's possible that as I go through these, you might resonate with a few, okay? That's okay. You can create a blend. This is still in pro some of you, some people when I uh, taught this before, they're like, I've never heard this before. I made it up, by the way, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> You have never heard this because I created it. <laughs> but this is still in the process. I might add another one that kind of, you know, the more I talk to people, the more I might find like one more archetype or whatever. But there's four of these main types. First is celebrity famous. The second is thought leading. Then we have intimately connected and brand forward. Okay, so I'm gonna go through each of these. And I just want you to tap in like, what's coming up for you when I tell you about these. The first person is celebrity famous. So this type of person, this type of impact maker is um, really on board with being super visible. Like, you know, they, they envision them being like Oprah style famous or maybe not famous, but just like that's kind of who they want to be. Right. So they love doing loads of video. They love showing up. They want to impact like millions of people. They want to have that mass appeal eventually. And they really have the vision of helping loads of people through teaching, public appearances, potentially books, uh, and different ways that are very like mass scale. And they want the fame, right? They want to be famous, not necessarily in an egotistical way, but they just know that that's who they, they're meant to be. They're meant for that type of greatness. And um, they don't necessarily want to be a celebrity, where they just want to like be friends with celebrities and that's why they want to be famous but they actually like know that being at that level of fame allows them to impact people and like really serve at a high level so and but a big differentiator here is that they want to be known not just in their industry but like across the board right so marie forleo is a good example of this because she's not like an a-list celebrity but people not necessarily in the entrepreneurship space know her because she does her podcast or her video podcasts, she inter the TV show, she interviews a lot of people that are in very different industries. And because of that, people get to know about her and find out about her. And that's the world that she's building for herself. Okay, another example here is Lewis House, who started as a different one, which you guys will find that often you'll start somewhere else and then eventually want to build to being maybe celebrity famous. Um, Lewis House now gets celebrities on his podcast. So now he's at the celebrity famous stage. Um, I said stage, they're not stages, they're just, he just shifted into this identity now. So for someone that resonates with being celebrity famous, um, you'll definitely thrive with doing loads of videos, YouTube, maybe like a TV show, um, podcasting, speaking on stage, publicity engagements, big events, writing books, anything that is like a mass appeal where you get to like really impact a ton of people. The way to this vision, if you're interested in actually like this is this is what I'm excited about, like this is what I want. Your goal is, is going to be to create tons of amazing content and especially content that may go viral because that's what you want. You want to be seen by a ton of people. So going viral might actually be really exciting for you, right? Going viral is great for anybody, really. But like you really want that, right? You want to get there as quickly as possible. And then also creating partnerships and relationships with other people, especially people that also are quite powerful in their space. And if you want to do one-on-ones, you're probably going to have to do it at a very, very limited time, maybe not doing a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one at all, because it's not going to serve your vision of helping at a mass scale, right? It might actually make you feel a little bit resentful or burnt out if you're working with people individually versus in groups or potentially creating passive products, passive income products or books. So like I said on the bottom, you may struggle with doing one-on-one -on -one clients, and you might also struggle if you're like creating amazing content and you're not getting a lot of an engagement. Um, it might be really challenging for you to deal with, 
right? Because you know that you're meant to get a lot of engagement and get a lot of visibility. And if you're not getting that, you know, you might get a little bit frustrated. So just keep going, you'll get there. She definitely didn't start with having tons of, <laughs> tons of engagement either. Um, so that's the first one. Are we clear on that one, by the way? Yes? Okay. Whoa, I'm going way too fast. Come back, come back. Ah, ah that's <laughs> happening. Okay. <laughs> the second one is thought leading. So this is a little similar to Celebrity Famous, but this one is really focused on having a big audience specifically in your niche or industry where you're known in your niche or industry, but outside of that, no one really like knows who you are. So are you gonna be stopped at an airport wanting to take a picture? Yeah, if it's a person in your industry, but everyone else is gonna be like, who, who are you? Like what? Cool, like calm down, right? <laughs> so you may or may not want to help millions of people, but uh, you know, doing it in a way that is very focused on the topics that you actually want to focus on, right? So you're not gonna be creating a ton of mass appeal types of content where like Marie talks about all kinds of things related to life. She started with more business and, um, you know, so I think a good example is Seth Godin, who's very, very, very well known in the marketing space, but people that even are entering entrepreneurs might not know who he is. Who here knows who he is? Great, some people don't. Does anybody know who not, doesn't know who he is? Okay, so there's a few, right? So the thing here is that you really like want to express your ideas in a powerful way, but the thing is you tend to have ideas that are like kind of different from what most people are sharing, right? So you're really like starting to, what's the word I'm looking for? You're really like going beyond what most people are teaching. Right, so you're developing your own ideas, you're developing your own concepts, you're like super passionate about your topic and focus, and you're like on the forefront of the development of that industry, right? You're creating a lot of growth in that industry. Um, and a big way that you can do, so I said you could be teaching university courses because you're like a true expert, like people really want to, to have you be that like ultimate expert um, in front of them. And a big thing is that you're going beyond what people might even realize that they want. So I'll talk about a struggle of this particular impact maker. But a big one for this is that you might be writing books, uh, you might be doing speaking engagements as a part of your future, and really just like being that authority in your space. Now when it comes to, <laughs> I like that. Now the thing that happens with the thought leading type is that you're gonna thrive with creating tons of uh, writing, like written content, so a lot of blogs, maybe on Medium, um, posting on Instagram, uh, blogging is gonna be big, definitely getting interviewed on podcasts or doing your own podcast, um, writing books, speaking on stages, teaching at schools and universities, leading high level masterminds, doing done for you services potentially, or leading your team to do that. Um, working with leaders is a big one as well. You are probably not gonna be the person to lead your own podcast where you're interviewing people talking about surface level stuff. You're probably not gonna do a TV show where you're interviewing people, again, talking about surface level stuff, because that's gonna be frust like super frustrating to you. If you envision yourself being at the thought leading type of impact maker, maybe now or in the future, your goal is to create lots of prolific content. Okay, so prolific content might not always get a ton of engagement in the beginning, because a lot of people might not get it, but the right people will, and it will all like snowball from there. So try to really create content that's going against the grain a little bit and potentially being a little bit like what people might not be expecting to hear. So yeah, maybe uh, not necessarily controversial, but just, you know, maybe ruffling some feathers if it makes sense for you. So the thing, this is what I see. I actually work with a lot of thought leading types of people. The is one of them. Um, so a thing that happens is that these people tend to either struggle working with people that are very new to the industry because they really don't like teaching beginner type of stuff that burns them out. You know, if they're like, okay, if I had to teach you this one-on-one -on -one stuff, like one more time, I swear. <laughs> because they really wanna go beyond, like they really wanna work with leaders, people that are advanced in their industry because they wanna share these like ideas and concepts that they have brew in their mind of like the future of marketing or for me, marketing, <laughs> the future of your industry or the future of your niche or how things are really developing. You're starting to see patterns of like, you know, how your people are really evolving when it comes to this work, okay? Now the thing that might also, sh you might struggle is when it comes to marketing and getting your stuff seen and potentially going viral, in order to create content that people really resonate with is you have to address what they want versus what they need. 
the challenge that a lot of these thought leading types and a lot of my healer clients struggle with is that they'll create content based on what they know people need to hear versus what they actually want to hear. So they're missing each other, right? Like to give you an example, let's say you're a dating coach and you're like, well, you're not getting in a relationship because you know, you're, you're, you're not able to attract men because maybe you're not in your feminine energy, right? But this lady over here is like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I just want, like, just find me my boyfriend already. Like, God, stop talking about this feminine energy bullshit, right? And you're like, no, but like, this is how you do, you know, this is how you do, just feminine energy, feminine energy, like, what are you talking about? Like, stop, just tell me how to date. Like, how do I find, like, how do I attract men, right? So completely missing each other, right? This person could absolutely be helped by this person, probably not one-on-one because -on -one, that would frustrate you if you're a thought leader, but maybe like selling your books or what have you. So a lot of these people will create content or create messaging in a way that is missing a lot of people that could definitely be helped by your products and services. So just be aware of that, you, you know, try to like tap into yourself like, okay, maybe 50% of my content will be for the more advanced crowd. But like, if your goal is to also grow, maybe create some content that can serve the other people and help them build up to know a lot of these concepts and things like that. Is that, is this making sense? Can anyone resonate with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Intimately connected is next. So intimately connected is uh, where you really resonate with not necessarily having a massive audience, but really being very connected with the people you serve. So potentially having a, mo a smaller or even if it's big, but like a super tight knit community of people where you know people, you get to love them up, you get to actually talk to each person individually, you get to build these relationships with people and actually like serve them. Like you really want to sit down with each person ideally and like talk to them and get to know them and like, okay, what are you, what are you struggling with? Like, well, how can I serve you? How can I support you? Right? It's very service oriented, right? It's very focused on each person. So you really, um, you really value connection and relationships here. It's really, really important to you. And um, the way you serve is probably going to be mainly one-on-one, potentially some intimate groups. You might have um, high ticket things, maybe courses and things like that, or potentially affiliate based, but those might not be a huge part of how you actually work with people individually because you crave that connection. You need to be intimately connected with each person or as much as you possibly can. You're gonna thrive with creating lots of personal stories and content. Because again, in order to connect with someone, you have to share a little bit of yourself with them, right? So sharing stories, sharing personal content, um, doing vlogging, podcasting, uh, big on creating community like with Facebook groups, doing in-person meetups or events, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or mentorship, high touch group programs or courses. Now, as you grow, you're probably gonna have to scale up the pricing of that. So a lot of intimately connected people end up charging a lot of money as they grow because they still want to have that intimate connection, but they can't possibly serve everybody at that level um, as they have a lot of people interested in their services. If your goal is to continue or to eventually serve as an intimately connected uh, impact maker is to be of as much value as possible, right? So you're, co you're coaching, you're in that connections. Like if you're like, okay, I'm trying to grow my audience. I'm not, you know, I'm trying to create all this content, but you're actually an intimately connected person, like strive to talk to a, one new person every day, like actually get on a call with them. Not necessarily to always serve or sell, but just like you need to be in that connection with people. Um, getting in a phone personal connection. The struggle that you might face is selling passive products or uh, self-study courses um, without any live access. This is a common thing I hear from people that are intimately connected, where they're like, well, I know I'm, that's my next step. I know that I can make money selling courses, but like, why would anyone wanna buy it if I'm not a part of it? Like, what? Well, how, how? They just like don't see the value in that, and that's obviously on a mindset block that can be overcome, but they might struggle with this, okay? All right, and our last one is a brand forward. So the example here is a quote, but it's from Boss Babe. So the thing here is that you actually don't want to be an impact maker as a personality. Um, you want your brand or your products to do the talking for you. So a lot of product-based businesses would fall into this, but also businesses that eventually want to have a business run not by the main person, by other people instead, like other coaches they hire and things like that. Um, so your vision is to have a business that is hands-off, does not require you to do a lot of work or be front-facing. Um, you don't really wanna do any speaking or writing books or a lot of visibility. You're happy being behind the scenes, 
having a team, having them do the thing, or having your products do, do the talking, right? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? It's fine. Um, and this is especially for product-based businesses or agencies as well, where you can have your team or product create the impact for you. Now, when it comes to this one is you're gonna thrive with creating relationships with influencers and people to align with because they can be the face. Because you, you're still gonna, like, it's, yeah, it's great if you have a product, that's great, but it's like, especially in 2020, like we need to connect with real people in order to trust a brand. So if you're not willing to do it, you're gonna have to find someone else to do the talking for you, right? Otherwise, it's gonna be a little bit challenging for you. So um, also creating a lot of value and education for free to show off the content. So if your product is the main thing, create tons of content for free so people really get to see that you're someone to be to, to trust because if you don't have that element of like well it's me like you get to you know I'm gonna hang out with you or you know here's my personal story again it's gonna be a little bit harder for people to trust you or keep you on top of mind for them because there's gonna be less of that emotional impact right it's gonna be more yeah just a little bit more left-brained prolific content that stands out making the product and brand due to talking if your goal is to have a brand forward type of uh, brand is ideally to, for most people, is to actually start with a different impact making, uh, impact maker type because it's just gonna be easier versus starting out with a name brand and then trying to be, you know, not a part of it. You're just gonna, it's just gonna be, a, not that you're gonna, sh yeah, you're probably gonna struggle <laughs> unless you have someone else doing, the, being the face. Uh, just because of how people are responding now, like having these connections and community, and, and talking to people um, or doing you know, video or getting on podcasts or just talking, like in general, just having that connection and relationship is, um, I mean, it's a, it's a huge reason why people buy, especially now because everyone's been burned before by other people. So um, I would consider starting with a different one and then with the intention of moving into that being the goal. Okay, so you can slowly start implementing different aspects of how that vision eventually would look like. I would probably not start with a personal brand though, I would just be the movement leader, where the person behind the brand, and eventually as you're growing, as you're making you know, however much money, you can take yourself out little by little and adding other people in front, okay? So again, if that is you, you might struggle with creating a true connection with people, becoming memorable and standing out, also because it's like where you don't have a face, um, and doing one-on-one -on -one yourself, so that might burn you out quite a bit. You will definitely thrive if you're a bread forward business, creating low ticket courses or just low ticket items because they're easier to say yes to versus high ticket things. Because again, if I don't know who you are, you're just a faceless brand. Why would I spend thousands of dollars on you, right? I might, so consider having a lot of lower ticket items, bundles or hosting events as well, where then you get to be on stage potentially or having other people, maybe a conference or something like that. So as you're going through this, you wanna consider these four questions. So from everything that you go through, ask yourself what turns you off? What feels exciting, intriguing, or just feels right? What is the empowered decision for good of all? So let me explain this one. I'm gonna go through an alignment um, exercise with you a little bit later on different marketing activities you can do after our quick break.